Hey folks, CJ here, coming back to you with another movie review. This time, um, I'm going to be talking about Proud Mary. Uh, the movie, uh, coming from uh, Screen Gems and Sony, uh, is directed by Babak Najafi. Uh, you probably have seen him, seen his movies before, where he did uh, Limp, uh, London Has Fallen. That was the last movie that he did. At least major Hollywood movie he did, London Has Fallen. Uh, this movie stars Taraji P. Henson, Billy Brown. Uh, Jahi Winston, Danny Glover, Xander Berkeley, Margaret Avery, and Neil McDonald. Uh, what can be said about this movie that, well, right now, there's no critics out here really doing their reviews. So, if I had to really use one word to describe this movie, it would be one word. Simple. This movie is a very simple and to-the-point movie. It's not unlike The Commuter, which, if you can, uh, check out our review that we did for that movie. Uh, unlike The Commuter, it this movie, Proud Mary, tells a very straightforward story. Uh, Taraji P. Henson plays the title character, Mary. She is a hit woman who works for an organized crime family, led by Danny Glover's character, Benny. And uh, he works alongside his son, Tom, played by Billy Brown. You might know Billy Brown from How to Get Away with Murder. And Neil McDonald, who is Neil McDonald. Uh, uh, she, at the outset of this movie, she does a hit for uh, Benny. And in doing that, she comes across uh, the, per the, the person's uh, that she killed, uh, son. She doesn't interfere, and we cut to a year later, and she's basically watching after the kid. And what ends up kind of happening once she ends up watching after the kid, and there's a specific incident that happens in this movie, it kind of pushes the movie forward in terms of its plot. Now, you've seen this kind of movie before, you know, you get the, the, the how should I say, the trope of the hit hit person trying to get out the game you know they're done uh you know and the hit want the hit person that's gravitating to the person that they're protecting in this instance you have mary she's gravitating to she's basically having a camaraderie and a mother-son relationship with walter with danny that's uh jahi winston's character um that's the character who johnny jahi winston plays and they have a very mother-son relationship and it to me it works and i think that's that's what's good about this movie is that everybody in this movie they do a pretty good job in their roles and such they don't go crazy with it they don't go over the top with it they're they're just playing it very just straightforward and again simple uh you know danny glover is head of this organized mob family and such uh, we get the trope with his son, Tom, who is just, you know, Danny is just like playing it very conservative and how he's running his family. And you got his son, Tom, who's like, no, Dad, we got to really hit him hard and all that stuff. You know, they don't go too crazy with it to where it's over the top. It's just you establish that and they just keep it at that. Um, Benny, of course, loves Mary as a daughter, you know, and such. And, of course, Mary and Tom have had a relationship previously. It's all these things that you see and you're like, oh, of course that is. that's what happened. Or, of course, that's what, you know, they had a relationship. Or, oh, of course, he sees her as a daughter. It's things like that, but, you know, it doesn't hurt the film. It ultimately doesn't hurt the film. Uh, you know, like I said, going back to Mary and Danny, they have with that mother-daughter relationship. That's credit to Taraji Henson's acting and Jahi and just like in their camaraderie and such, you know, she, whether she, you know, like I said, she has those black mama moments where she's yoking up Danny when he's cutting up there in the store and he's trying on jackets and stuff, trying on, um, you know, sports jackets and stuff because they're dressing up for a party and stuff. And, you know, he's being a little, you know, bratty kid. He's like, I don't like this shit and stuff. He's like, hey, you watch your mouth, you know, things like that, just little things like that. She's doing the stuff that, you know, you watch, you're like, yeah, my mom would do that, you know, those kind of things. And like I said, it's believable. Their relationship is very believable. And that that's what worked because if it didn't work, I don't think the movie will work. Uh, Taraji also, like I said, I think also because of the simplicity of this movie with the action and such, you believe that Taraji is this kick-ass assassin, this kick-ass hit woman. 
You know, she's out here killing. And that's credit to, again, they don't go ridiculous with the action. It's very standard action fare you've seen before. And you buy, like, oh, Taraji's murking people. All right, cool, dope. That's awesome. You know, she isn't doing any John Woo shit. She isn't, like, CG, any of that. It's very simple and to the point. And it, like I said, again, it works. You know, you're not, it's believable. You know, and I think that's what makes it work. Because, again, it reminded me of John Wick. Nothing over the top. Well, John Wick was over the top in certain instances. But I think John Wick also has some simple stuff, too. With this movie, again, it's very simple and to the point. Nothing crazy. Straightforward story. Straightforward just action. Nothing crazy. Just, again, simple. So, and like I said, it's not perfect. And like I said, when I say it's not perfect... I think that's only because of it going on those story tropes that we've seen countless times. And like I said, that's a gift and a curse. Some people might not like it. Some people will do. I don't mind it personally and stuff like that, but I, that is a hindrance because you kind of see what's going to happen. You'll see a plot line like, well, of course they had a relationship. Well, of course, you know, this happened with this character. Well, of course Tom is going to act that way. Things like that. You know, of course they had a relationship. Of course they're going to do this. Of course she's going to gravitate towards the kid. So... You buy it. You do. You buy it and, it, and, you, and you just roll with it. Um, definitely go see this movie. I think one of the things that, and we've covered on the show countless times, we have uh, on our podcast, if you listen to it, uh, we've had, over the years, we've had months where we dedicated to black action films. And lately, there has been a very we haven't had a legit black action movie and stuff where where it's a leading black character with a cast that has black people like a lot of black people in it um i think prior to this in terms of like a black action film that had a leading woman at least particularly a leading black woman and stuff prior to this we had colombiana you know and i said colombiana is all right you know i i I'm not as over the moon with Columbiana like I am with Proud Mary. I think Proud Mary is a better movie than Columbiana, uh, just structurally and stuff and stuff. But like I said, it's nothing taken away from Columbiana because again, I enjoy Columbiana. I think it's an entertaining movie and such. But you know, like I said, Zoe Saldana was just like she she again, she's a black woman. Well, she's black Latina. Let me correct that. Um, and I enjoy that movie because again, we rarely get women of color in those kind of leading roles like that, particularly black women. So prior to, like I said, prior to this movie, you had Columbiana. Prior to Columbiana, you had Pam Greer. And that's and that's also something that Proud Mary is kind of homage to, is that kind of Foxy Cleop Cleopatra Jones kind of movie and stuff a, a bit. Um, but like I said, prior to Columbiana, we had, you know, Pam Greer and stuff. And, you know, it is what it is and such, you know, but, you know, at the end of the day, I want to see more. I know, um, uh, what's her face song from Being Mary Jane? She has, hold up, I keep forgetting her damn name, and I'm kicking myself right now. Gabrielle Union. Gabrielle Union has a movie coming out. Again, she's leading role. She has a movie coming out called Breaking In. And that looks to be a ridiculous movie, and she's looking like the black mama that's out there to kick ass and take names. And that's and that's another thing is that, like I said, with this movie, it's awesome to see Taraji out here kicking ass and taking names, shooting up people and stuff. It's awesome. Um, outside of if there was a negative, outside of the tropey stuff, the final the final act of the movie, okay, is what you expect. But like when you see it, there is a bit of like anticlimactic kind of thing because you expected the movie like okay we're going to see this and then when it doesn't happen you're like oh so that's how it ends and then you kind of just shrug and be like okay it is what it is so I mean it's it, some to some people that might be a hang up me it was a little bit of a hang up but it wasn't enough to like man fuck this movie it was actually like I said it was just like nah, okay fine that's what we're going to do that's what we're going to do um, but like I said it's just we the, we don't have much women of color really out here kicking ass. So I'm glad that this movie is this is out and is as good as it is. And, you know, like I said, with Gabrielle Union and breaking in, I hope that ends up turning out to be good. But um, like I said, it's a damn shame that this movie 
didn't get that huge of a marketing push. And I know there's logistics involved and stuff, and maybe Screen Gems had a reason for doing what they did. I'm not going to really give them much credit if if they if this movie does succeed, and I really do see it succeeding. I'm not going to necessarily give Screen Gems huge credit or anything for its success and stuff. Like I said, it could have been marketed better, but like I said, for all intents and purposes, I only seen it on regular TV. I've seen some spots on cable TV and stuff. You know, like I said, I've seen some billboards, but like I haven't seen much, seen much anything leading up to this movie that makes me feel like they really had faith into this movie. So, like I said before, at the outset of this, happy to report this is a great movie. You'll definitely enjoy enjoy watching it and such. Um, oh, side note: when I was mentioning the whole black women kicking ass and taking names. Forgot to mention Rebel. Rebel on BET. Watch it. That's another movie that has a woman of color out here leading the charge and kicking ass, taking names. Watch that show. So sorry about that. Um, but yeah, go on, go see Proud Mary. If you really like, I said, if you had to choose between the Commuter and Proud Mary this weekend, go see Proud Mary. You won't regret it. It's it's a way better put together movie than the Commuter. Trust and believe it is. Go watch Proud Mary. You won't regret it. Three and a half out of five. Go see it. You'll enjoy it. You won't regret it. So with that in mind, I will catch you guys later. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more of these reviews and, um, and any of our other content. Uh, be sure to subscribe to us on iTunes and Stitcher and any of any other apps that you could listen to podcasts on and stuff. Also, subscribe to our our other pod or other side podcast that we do um 3bg recaps and discussions that's on itunes as well that's our little feed for um our recaps and discussions of tv shows and such so subscribe to that as well hit us up with reviews and such uh if you see primary this weekend definitely shoot us an email with your thoughts and feelings and opinions on and stuff or you can comment on the video below if you've seen the movie give us your thoughts on the movie and stuff we'll definitely read it and stuff but yeah go see go see primary you won't regret it Taraji does her damn thing. I want to see more of it and such. Three and a half out of five. Go see it.